Hi everyone, in this video I want to show you how I created this animation here. And the cool thing about it is that it actually uses Blender's physics engine to drive and calculate the motion of this Tesla here. So if I turn off the modeled parts and turn on the rig, you can see that Blender is actually using rigid bodies and rigid body constraints to calculate the motion. But the really cool thing is I'm actually driving this in real time using an Xbox controller. So you can see my inputs. I'm accelerating using the right trigger. Press A to hit the parking brake. Left trigger brakes it. I can go in reverse if I hold down the left shoulder button, accelerate, and of course steering and everything. So this is what I'm going to show you how to set up as far as getting your controller to work. If you're interested in using rigid body physics to set up and drive your vehicle or animate your vehicle, I actually, that's a lot more complicated and I actually just released a course on that on Udemy. You can see a link for that in the description. So let's get started setting this up. Okay, the first thing you're going to have to do is we're going to have to install a new library for Blender and for Python. And if you've ever used Python before, you generally use pip, P-I-P, to install new libraries. And we need a library that's called xinput that will accept inputs from a controller. And the only way I've found to install new libraries in Blender is this method, which I found at this link, which I'll get the link in the description below. But you need to come into your Blender directory and run it as administrator. All right, so now I have this other scene open with the same Tesla model. It's this really simple drawbridge scene. And what we're gonna do is come over to scripting and we need to open up some of the code that's in that link below. And I'm just gonna, let's just make a new one here. And I'm going to paste in the link. It came from this B3D and a plant interplanetary. And the idea is to is it shows you how to installing Python packages with pip and Blender on Windows 10. And it's this great little tutorial. I highly recommend. But I'm gonna paste the code in here. From here. Control C. And I'm going to paste it right below here, like that. So what this does is it basically sets it up so you can install any library into Python. But it's having us install SciPy, which we don't want. We actually want what's called X input Python. So I'm going to toggle my system console here. This is going to give your output from Python. And then I'm going to hit play. And I already have mine installed, although it seems to not be installed here, maybe. Um, but it should show up like this. If you have a bunch of red, it probably means you didn't run it as administrator or with administrative uh, rights. So it looks like it finished. Everything works. Now we need to actually write the code. So that comes from another website. And it actually comes from uh, Blender's developer site. I'll show you that. All right, here it is. And it's a modal timer. And this is just kind of a kind of template for a modal type code. <laughs> and I'm not the best person to tell you anything about coding. But my understanding is a modal just kind of allows you to execute more than one thing at a time in Blender. So if you hit play in Blender to play the animation, it doesn't really allow other code to run at the same time. That's kind of my understanding. So we're going to copy this code and make some changes to it. So what this code does, if you were to run it, is that it'll play the animation, 
and then change the background color incrementally. So it kind of changes the saturation and the hue by these increments, but we're not going to set it up to do that. We are going to set it up to drive this vehicle. And the first thing we need to do is import X input. And the next thing we need to do is delete this silly part, as they call it. I'm just going to delete all that and then get in line with this if statement here. And I'm just going to do a comment here that says uh, controller code. And then we need to type out our code. And the first thing we need is the state of the controller, which is going to give you all the buttons that are currently pressed, what position all the joysticks or triggers are in, things like that. So we're going to do that. So this is x input dot get state and then zero. And zero will be the index of the controller you're using. Mine is the only controller, so it's the first one. And then we need to target what we want to change. And for this vehicle here, I actually have a setup where I have a controller, which is this empty sphere, and I have some custom properties. So you can set up whatever you want to move around. If you just have a cube and you wanted to adjust the X position or the Y position, you could do it that way. Uh, so I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna right click and say, um, copy full or yeah, copy full data path. And then come in here and say control V and that's gonna give, give you the target you need. And then we're going to set it equal to x input dot get trigger dot values. And then we want to get the state that we already got. And then we want to tell it, so this is going to get the trigger value. So I have it where if I hit the trigger, it's going to accelerate. So this is targeting the acceleration. So I want the right trigger, which is the second one, so one. And then I have mine set up in percentages, so I'm going to do times 100. So the value you get from the triggers is 0 to 1. So if your trigger is half depressed, then you get 0.5, that kind of thing. And I'm going to set it up for all the other things, too, here. So I'm going to do break. And I'm going to do steering. But for steering, instead of trigger, we want the thumb joystick. So we need to change that to thumb. Oh, and for brake, we want the left trigger, which is going to be zero. That's the first trigger. And for the thumb, I want to use the left thumb, which is going to be the first one, so zero. And then the first axis, which is the side, the left to right axis, like that. All right, I also have some code to, actually one of the things um, I have is target speed. So I'm going to do that and I'm just gonna make it 100. So I'm just gonna set it as 100. And I have the parking brake. So I'll show you how to set that up. So again, these are just custom properties I have for this controller over here. So I'm going to have parking brake, and I'm going to set it equal to zero, and then put an if statement here. So if x input dot get button, so this is for the buttons, values, and then we want to read in the state. And the button I want is A, so this is going to be my parking brake button. So if that's pressed, I want to set my parking brake to 100. Oh, put the wrong thing there. So equal 100. Okay. And then I'll just have a little thing for reverse here. 
So if x input dot get button values state, and then I want to target my left, my reverse button is going to be the left shoulder. So left. So that's above the trigger. Then I'm going to set or then I'm going to set the target speed to negative 50. So let me set that up. Okay. And I think that's all the code I need there. But we need to add some stuff to the execute stuff thing down here. So I'm going to give me a little space here. And one of the things that at least is important with rigid bodies is I want to make sure the rigid body world is reset. The simulation is reset. So I'm going to put this code in here and I'll kind of show you what it does. So this thing's going to target my controller, which is again this empty sphere. And it's going to add a constraint to it and then remove it. And that's going to make sure, that's just going to make sure that the simulation resets. So there's nothing in the cache. And then right here, it's going to play, start the animation. Okay. And this should work, or I was hoping it would, but it didn't. Because there's one more thing we need to add. And we need to add something that kind of triggers Blender to update. And to do that, what I do is I just move an object. So here I am targeting my controller again, this empty sphere, and I'm setting its location in the x direction, that's zero, to 0, .0. It's already at 0, 0, and it doesn't actually move. So this doesn't do anything except it triggers, I think, Blender to update these values, these property values. So I'm just going to put a comment here and it's going to say for some reason need this in here for it to update. Now we can try it. And let's see if it works. So I'm going to hit play. And I'm going to come over here and layout so I can see better. Zoom in a little bit and press play or press the controller so i'm pressing the right trigger to go and i think the thing was a little too high so let's try it again press play here come into here let's try and make it across the bridge before it gets too high and here we go a little bump and we made it and then we fall off do it again. We'll just do some off-roading here. So anyway, that's how you can get a controller to work. However, to control whatever you want it to control. So again, if you want to learn how to do vehicle motion with rigid body physics in Blender, I have a course on Udemy. And you can use the link in the description. And thanks for watching.